Well, as you can see, I got deer out there. It's snowing, and uh, it's beautiful outside. Just cloud covered. So that lets me get down in the studio earlier today. The sun isn't burning right through this window. All right, let's get busy with my artwork. Time to play with some clay. Okay, it's time to start making a rifle. And they were called rifles because they had rifling down the barrel. I learned while doing the John Lovewell piece that the difference between a musket and a rifle is a musket is a smooth bore and a rifle is a rifled bore. And, uh, that's what I learned. I'm going to use some of this, uh, bonsai wire. <laughs> I'm using this bonsai wire. We're going to use it. And, uh, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to use a, a fondue stick for the barrel because it's straight. And I'm going to use bonsai wire to uh, do the uh, stock of the rifle. And it's going to be covered in a uh, sheath. So I'm not going to worry about the detail, but I do want to get everything uh, lined up properly. And I'm going to use uh, my hammer, if I can find my hammer. I'm going to use my hammer to uh, straighten out the uh, wire a bit. So that I can attach it to the gun barrel. Okay. I gotta figure out where to put this uh, rifle on his back, so that's why I'm gonna hit, go ahead and do that now. Rather get deep into texturing his shirt and not have it properly sculpted for a rifle hanging off his back. Now, the uh, barrel of a Hawkins would be about 28 inches long. What I did was I printed this off on my computer, and yeah, the printer is running out of ink, so it's turned green. But that's okay, I got ink coming tomorrow. And uh, so I'm covered. <clears throat> Needs to be straightened just a little bit more. I love this anvil. If you can get your hands hands on a small anvil, do it because it's it's really handy for straightening out things that don't want to be straightened out. And a little tiny hammer. This is a old typesetter's hammer. Hammer. I used to work in typesetting back in the seventies. I worked in a printing shop, a printing company, and they used to set lead type on a on a uh, linotype machine. Before they had uh, 
computer generated type that's what we used yes I go back to the dark ages <laughs> oh my gosh when I think about the things that I've seen change in the world I mean I saw TV coming to in the homes for the first time back in the 40s and 50s Milton Burrow and and all the best comedians that ever lived when TV wasn't political everything's political now it seems Doing uh, the uh, Hawkins this way helps me to get the right angles and the right length, and I need that, so. Now, normally I would make this out of wax. But I'm going to try the uh, clay method first. If it doesn't work, I'll make it out of wax. You have to get the general shape of the rifle under the uh, scabbard. And I think I've achieved that. trigger guard and such and the hammer for the uh, percussion they had a flintlock up until about 1830 I think I can't remember quite honestly but it was fairly new at that time So, I'm going to try to position this on his back and see how it looks. Alright, that's about the angle I'm going to have the rifle on his back. And it also gives me the, uh, how the straps are going to hold that uh, rifle on his uh, back. So now got to make it look like a rifle in a case. There's no real need to do heavy detail when the object is going to be covered up completely. And uh, that's why I didn't go into great detail on that. But I still have to have the profile of the... Uh... Alright, i got to make the... Uh... Make it look like leather, soft leather that's draped over or the sleeve of the uh, gun case is in. And I've got to put some strain on it because of the uh, strap that's holding the weight of the rifle over his back. I know you probably can't see that. But But anyway, I made a strap by running clay through my pasta machine. Okay, I'm getting this uh, worked out. It takes some imagination. 
you got to imagine what the uh, stresses on the leather would be and try to work out the wrinkles it takes time you don't learn to do this overnight it's it just takes years of tr practice and doing it I've made a lot of gun cases and things like that in the past so I've got some experience at this that's one reason why I sell my instructional videos the other is to <laughs> try to keep myself going financially but anyway one reason is to pass on that 50 years of experience that I've got in sculpting and uh, I think uh, if you're interested in sculpting and you you're struggling right now it might be helpful I don't know but it can't hurt and I've tried to keep the prices real low and uh, they really are all right I got his gun case on now I'm gonna start working on the wrinkles of the shirt uh, first I'm gonna work on this forearm and uh, get it to where I'm I like it I'll fine-tune all this later but right now I I'm really happy the way this turned out and I can just imagine him if he was right-handed he'd grab the uh, stock of the rifle and then pull it out of the sleeve if he needed to do that and that's why I put it over his uh, left shoulder I'm going to do one thing before I quit and I'm going to paint that walking stick he's using with my uh, clay paint <laughs> it doesn't hurt anything but it might give some grip to the clay when I put the uh, fingers on to save questions on people from people who don't follow my videos I uh, had some paint made up to look be the same color as the uh, clay a long time ago at a uh, local paint shop actually true value here in Ennis, Montana. So that items that I use, such as this stick from outside, would not be confusing to the eye because it's a different color. All right, that's good. That'll be the last thing I do today. I've, uh, I'm happy with how the mountain man is turning out. I'm going to work on his hair too. But I want to get the uh, straps in for the uh, pipe. Or the, uh, not pipe, the uh, oh, uh, shot pouch and powder horn. And uh, got wrinkles to do inside the shirt there and stuff like that. But I like the gun case the way it turned out. I think it uh, was a good choice to put it there. And uh, I'm happy with it. And I'll fine tune that as time goes by. I don't want to do too much to it uh, right now. But uh, there are going to be some things I'm going to do with it to uh, 
the reason I'm not putting long fringe on it is because if he's walking through underbrush, the last thing you want is fringe to catch onto things. Uh, fringe looks d dynamic and and looks great, but it, it, it really would have been a hindrance. I mean, I had my sister-in-law uh, come up to Tahoe when I was living up there and bring her kids up, and we all went up to Donner Lake to go to go uh, rafting on the uh, water there. And I'm not talking about rapids. I'm just saying using uh, inflatable boats to go on the lake itself up on Donner's Pass. And uh, she walked through the hair, and, and she had hair clear down past her bottom. That's how long her hair was, and it was always getting caught in the underbrush as we walked through it. So I, I just can't see a wizened old mountain man with a lot of fringe on his clothing, except maybe on his leggings, and it would be probably be short fringe. Just something to draw the wet, the uh, water away from his uh, leggings. And that's all it was meant to do. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I'll catch you guys uh, next time. And a subscribe. And ring the little bell. Also, don't forget I have instructional videos available now online. The link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos. Later, everybody. Good night.